Last time, we talked about the course structure and the things you need to do to get the most out of the course. And really, the things you need to do are write a lot of code. So this time, we're going to actually talk about that process. What does it mean to write code and how do we go through that whole process? Before we do, think about writing a novel. And say you wanted to write a novel in French because that was the language you were familiar with and you felt it was very expressive and so on. So you write your novel in French. Now it turns out that I, who don't speak French, might want to read your novel. So to do that, we'd need to translate your novel from French into English, a language that I understand. And once that translation happens, I can read your novel and we move on from there. So the process we go through to generate source code and to generate an entire application is exactly the same. So first, we type in some source code. We actually write a program using some programming language. In this particular class, we're going to use C Sharp, but there are lots of programming languages people use. So this is a language that we as humans are comfortable, well, programmers, are comfortable with. And you'll be more comfortable with C Sharp by the end of this class, I hope. And so we type this code in to some, um, some document. And now we've got source code, but we've got source code that's in a language that the computer can't understand. So the next step is to actually compile and build that source code into an executable, something that the computer can actually understand so that it can be executed. After we've done that, we can now run the executable to play our game or run our program or whatever. And sadly, I'll underline this three times. A lot of times, we actually need to debug our code as well. So we have to go through our code and find the mistakes we've made and fix them so that the game runs properly the way we intended it to. You should now go take an in-lecture quiz before we start talking about IDEs. So go take that quiz and I'll be waiting for you when you come back. All right, so you told me what you understand about IDEs and how can they help? Well, it turns out that we could, without an integrated development environment, we could develop code. We could type in our source code into Notepad or WordPad or something like that because it's just pure text. That's why later in the course, you'll be submitting source code by copying and pasting into text boxes because it's just text. So we can use any text editor we want. We would then need to go to a command prompt window, which we can get to through accessories in Windows, and type in a command that says, OK, now compile and build my code. And then we could type in another command to execute it, or we could navigate through our folder structure and double click the executable. And then if we had to debug, well, that's a problem. And we'd have to figure out a way to try to find the bugs and fix them. An IDE like Visual Studio and Visual C Sharp 2010 Express is just one of the versions of Visual Studio lets us do all that stuff from within a single environment. So let's take a look. I'm going to start up Visual C Sharp 2010 Express and I'm going to create a new project. Now to start with, I'm going to just pick a Visual C Sharp project. The third one down is a console application. This is an application that will run in the command prompt window. And I'm going to change its name to intro. When I do, the environment generates a template of the code it knows I need to start with for a console application. Because this is hard to read in a video, I'm going to zoom in on it. You're probably not going to always do that when you type in your code, but it's helpful in a video. So now I'm going to do that first step. I'm going to type in some co source code and I will tell this to write line a message. A nice supportive early in the course message, hi noob. So that's typing in some source code. Now I'm going to build and I'll press F6 to build. And we see over here in the lower left hand corner, we get a build succeeded. That's great. It's converted, translated our source code into a language that the machine can understand. If I 
don't in fact build successfully, I'll press F6 again and you'll notice I get this error message, hard to miss, red circle, X in the middle, says, you know, something is wrong. And in this particular case, this is an easy one. A semicolon is missing and expected a semicolon. So I'll add that back in so that we can get a build succeeded. And now I can do that third step. I can execute my application. Now, there are two different ways we execute applications within Visual C Sharp. We can press F5, which we'll do with all our X and A games, or we can press Control F5. So we're going to use Control F5 for a console application. And when we do, we see we get this output, hi noob, press any key to continue. So find the any key and press it. And that's it. We've executed our program. Just so you know, if we pressed F5 instead in a console application, it flashes that output and immediately disappears, which is not very useful to us. Um, I don't have to do any debugging here because this message is exactly what I wanted it to be. So. I'm going to say that we've done all the steps we need to do for this console application within the IDE. So I'm going to close it and usually you are going to click save because you want to save the work that you've done. In this particular case, I'll discard it. Don't worry, I'll save it next time. So that's it for using the Visual C Sharp 2010 Express environment to go through those steps of writing, converting, and executing code. However, we want to do some game development stuff. And if we want to do game development, one of the great ways to do that is using XNA. So go do another in lecture quiz to tell me what you know about XNA, and then we'll talk about it some more. Okay, so we're back. XNA actually isn't an acronym. XNA is a game framework that Microsoft has provided for a few years now, and it's good for building games in Windows on the Xbox 360 and the Windows Phone 7. In this class, we're going to focus on Windows. That's what we're going to develop games for. Now, like any tool, especially in technology and game development, XNA will not be around forever. But it's really useful to learn XNA because it uses C Sharp, which is a language that is becoming more used in game development, especially in engines like the Unity game engine. It lets us understand how game development works in general. We're always going to be, you know, updating our game world and rendering our game world, and XNA does that. And there are other tools that are being built right now on top of XNA. So the Monogame framework uses those XNA ideas and lets you develop for other platforms like Android, iOS, macOS, and others. And so it's really useful to learn XNA to develop games. So let's actually go back to our development environment and use as XNA briefly. This time I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to pick XNA Game Studio. I'm going to build a Windows game and I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to rename it just like I renamed before. I'll call this intro game. And second of all, I'm going to actually browse to the place where I want to save this game. So I'm going to select the default folder because I made sure it was set up beforehand. But it's important for you to know where you're saving all this stuff. So make sure you know what location it's saving these games to so that you can you know later go back and run those again maybe debug if you have to and so on so i'm going to say okay and it's going to build me another template that i'm not even going to zoom in on it has a whole bunch of extra stuff in it but i can build it build succeeded good news doesn't mean it works although in this case it does but the build succeeded and now I'll F5, not control F5, I'll F5 in my XNA game. And I get this beautiful cornflower blue screen with a weird aspect ratio and I'm all done. So I'm going to exit out of here. It actually automatically saved my game when I created that. And that's really it for the new stuff for today. So what you should do for next time is you should go and install Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. Don't pick a different version. 2012 won't work. 2008 won't work. Something else won't work. It's got to be 2010 Express. And 
So download, install that, do the documentation, make sure you have that available, then download XNA Game Studio 4.0 Refresh, install that, and you should be able to follow the same exact steps that I followed in today's lecture to use the environment. The instructions are included in the appendix of the book, and they're also included on the Coursera webpage for this course, and it's in the Setting Up Your Development Environment page. So before you go, one more question for you, one more in-lecture quiz. So go do this next in-lecture quiz. And we're done for today. Next time, we will actually start doing some other stuff. There's an optional lecture for meeting the instructor if you want to find out some more information about me. But if you don't, you could just move on to the next lecture.